Hello everyone. So today I'm going to give you a demo on CCNP security and the topics we are going to discuss are uh, what type of attacks and what type of VPNs are available. Uh, so in security, we have information security, which uh, in which we need to understand what is DID. DID is uh, defense in depth. That's the first thing that we need to understand. So defense in depth means that you are putting uh, layers of obstacles into your network or uh, before your network. So those are the kind of security policies, physical security, other type of security to protect your network. So that means if if you get attacked, in that case, you get enough time to understand what type of damage uh, an attacker can make or is making. And uh, so you can, also you can understand that all the mitigations, what type of mitigations you already have in place, uh, and are they enough to protect your network or not? This also sometimes refers as a onion layer security, as you have seen that uh, uh, around onion uh, in the onion you have multiple layers of onions. Similarly, so these layers can be defined into the terms, and you can see the types of layers that we can uh, apply to our network security are kind of these seven. So first is non-technical. When we say non-technical is related to your uh, guards, security guards and all. And when we say physical, it's uh, your uh, security doors, cameras, biometrics, card readers, all those things. And uh, the perimeter is you will be having uh, hard walls. Those cannot be broken easily or the, the big gates and all and the fencing. Uh, so similarly, when you uh, where we, if you have seen, you must have seen in the, like in the army areas, there are a lot of fencing and uh, high uh, uh, high length of walls so that nobody can uh, uh, do the trespassing and all those things. The network security is again you when you are putting the policies to block this, block what kind of network, what kind of uh, packets, IP addresses, ports, all those things. And when we say, uh, so network security is again, it's uh, your ASA firewall adaptive security appliance that is covers. And uh, the whole security is your local firewall, the machine security malware protections that uh, you have on your specific machine. The application security is your authentication to the application. And uh, uh, if you have any strong, uh, uh, strong uh, layer, uh, so, so what do you say that two way authentication enabled for your application to log in. The data security. So you are protecting your data into the data servers or the NAS servers. So this, this is kind of uh, that we understand that defense in depth before going into that. So similarly, the types of attacks in this case can have, uh, can be uh, segregated by, uh, by the layers. So, as you have uh, studied in uh, your basic thing, it's uh, OSI model you have learned. So similarly, according to that, we have layer one, layer two, layer three uh, types of attacks. So layer one is your physical security uh, where that can be breached or the perimeter that wall can be broken or the physical security can be breached. That is your L1 attack. And layer two attack is on your uh, devices actually that Maybe that uh, switches uh, or the wires, somebody is cutting into that and then connecting into your wires in between. And uh, that is also called as uh, identity based network uh, services. So, in layer two attacks, we have different types of attacks. One is uh, max spoofing attack, another is uh, arc poisoning attack, another one is DSCP snooping, VLAN hopping, man in the middle attack. A lot of others are there. So uh, let's understand what exactly they are. So when we say the max spoofing attack, so max spoofing attack is when somebody is spoofing. So the name is telling you everything. So somebody is spoofing your Mac as uh, 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 to the server where you are connecting. So let's say uh, uh, the, the switch which you are connected and uh, with that, some user is trying to become you and uh, trying to send the packet that I am from this MAC address. So for example, the two host tasks, host 
uh, are talking with each other and they know the mac address of each other because they have already communicated so in that case uh, they must have uh, their own r table and known that the mac address r table is address resolution, resolution protocol and when we uh, when you do the arp minus a on the pc the command you will it will show you that uh, the mac addresses of all the all the uh, ip addresses of all the devices that you have connected or communicated at least once so i was telling you that when two hosts are communicating with each other but somebody wants to become you and trying to understand what types of packet you are going to receive from another end what he will do is he will try to become as you so once he learnt your mac address or he he knows your mac address in that case he will change the mac address in the packets and send the packets towards the network in that case uh, when the switch opens the traffic or the packet or the, the 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 data you are sending it will understand that this packet is coming from that specific mac address and sends to the another host uh, once that host will be receiving that packet and open the mac address and he will be replying on to that packet so the similar packets can be reached to the another destination so in that case you were communicating to one host and that host is now again uh, sending or the traffic back to the you back to you as well as the defaulter host so that is the one way of uh, the max spoofing attack so uh, the example of max spoofing attack let me show you if i can okay so if you can see here uh, that uh, this is your switch and uh, you know that in your switch you will be having uh, the cam table content addressable memory uh, which will be having the uh, the port and the mac address information because it's a layer 2 one so for example in this case the pc a and the pc b mac a mac b which is uh, trying to get access uh, which is communicating already and what uh, what this uh, the hacker will do the mac c which is sitting on this so he, obviously he got the access to your switch in that case so what he is trying to do is he is trying to spoof the mac address of mac a and saying that i am mac a instead of uh, the traffic so what will happen is switch was sending traffic to this guy and uh, instead of that he will be sending traffic to this guy here to the hacker so that is called a uh, max spoofing attack as normal and uh, then we have the arc poisoning arc poisoning is related to your uh, pc to pc let me show you how the arc poisoning looks like so arc poisoning is looks like arc spoofing attack is uh, the arc table so if you can say this uh, this system or this machine what he will do earlier the communication was this way right so when a router or the system or the switch or the system they are communicating with each other and uh, but now what this system will do this system will comes in the middle and uh, what it is what he did is the arc table of this router and uh, the arc table of uh, this machine will get poisoned how it will get poisoned it will send our arc uh, traffic saying that that if you uh, the router has changed is mac or the or the uh, or the the table so the it will the attacker will scan the network and determine the ip address of at least two devices because it requires uh, to attack in bit in between and uh, and then attacker will spoof it will use a spoofing tool like r spoofing drift net there are a lot of other r posed up so uh, these these will send a response to the forged mac addresses and uh, will be sending the will be sending the packet to the belongings and it will save the mac address of this system as something new here for example earlier the mac address of the system a here was abc but now in this this is deleted because this is 
sending the spoofed off saying that now the new mac address is bbc which is actually this guy so he say okay so the ip address which was 10.1 over here earlier it was having mac address of abc and now it is replaced by bbc so what happens is whenever the traffic is sent back to the route uh, this pc but this guy will be sending the peer traffic to this machine right so that is our spoofing that a kind of max spoofing so we'll discuss more in detail so this is the our spoofing attack let's check the another one dscp spoofing attack so dscp is uh, spoofing attack is like so in your network everybody uses dscp servers so when it's a dscp servers uh dscp server used to provide the ip address to the client machines so what this hacker will do in between so it's this all are kind of uh, man in the middle attack uh, kind of uh, attacks actually and uh, when the dscp server uh, originally sending the mac address or sending the ip addresses assigning the ip addresses to the to the client machines it will sit in between and uh, try to become the uh, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, so try it will try to become the DSCP server, and uh, it will spoof the DSCP. So the DSCP spoofing, uh, it will become the new DSCP server. So what exactly it will do is it will uh, it will get the mac address from the original dscp server and uh, it will assign their same mac address to him and uh, similarly when the packet reaches the switch and uh, switch will understand that this specific port will be having the new dscp server or the correct mac address so the traffic also will be redirected to this guy and this guy will spoof the uh, will send the new ip addresses to the machines and those machines will be redirected to this dscp server instead of the original one so the next one is vlan hopping attack so guys uh, vlan hopping attack is when someone is trying to access the traffic sitting in one vlan uh, to the another vlan so when the two different vlans it by default two different vlans traffic cannot communicate because it's a segregated one so when a pc a is sitting in vlan 5 is trying to connect communicate to vlan 6 which is in the different vlan the uh, v vlan 6 pc so that is called vlan hopping attack so guys these all are the attacks so to mitigate that we have lot we can do a lot of other things like we can bind the so for example to to stop the max spoofing attack we can use the port security so how it will work in that case so let me uh, show you that one the max spoofing attack so what happens is let's say select only so what happens is uh, in this switch over here we will gonna do the port security so port security we will bind this mac address over here and we'll see if anyone else on the port is trying to send the same MAC address, we will block that port immediately. Understood? So, one is this uh, switch ke port page, jo bhi, for example, the port number 10 hai, or this port number is 11. So, we will have security that if there is no other port, then we will say that my MAC address A hai, jo ki already port number 10 A, pe hai, to usko block kar do, port. Ko. So, that, will, that way we will stop the max spoofing attack right so other one is uh, arp spoofing attack so arp to avoid the arp spoofing attack we need to configure the dynamic arp inspection so dynamic arp inspection what it will do it will it will uh, do the inspection at very first jab sabse pehle arp entries banengi and it will make sure those arp entries will be correct or not and it is coming from the exact mac exact uh, uh, exact port or not so all together Port security and dynamic arm inspection 
will work all those together and will protect your entire network. So dynamic arm inspection will need to be configured in that case on the switch, L3 switch. Or uh, then we have DSCP spoofing. For DSCP spoofing, we have the specific term called DSCP binding or DSCP uh, uh, snooping. So that needs to be configured on the device, right? So that way we can, uh, and the VLAN hopping attack, we need to stop using the native VLANs, default VLANs. We need to use the uh, uh, isolated VLANs or the private VLANs in that case to avoid this kind of VLAN hopping attacks. That we will under, uh, learn later. Okay. And then uh, we, we have the, so we have understood layer one, which is physical attack and how it can be prevented layer two which are these, which can be any of these. Layer three, layer three or the more uh, layers, layer seven or layer six. So those kind of attacks, so specifically layer three. So layer three, we know that we have all, all our routing uh, configured. Let's say you have configured OSP, PAGRP, and somebody got the access or to your router or at least just the connectivity to your router. And he is trying to blown out your all routing table. In that case, what it will do is, he will do is he will inject bad routes to destroy the access to, to destroy your device or to making it inaccessible. Uh, that comes comes under the, your uh, DOS, denial of service attack, you can say. So for that, we need to have, to avoid that, to mitigate that, we need to have authentication configured between routing protocols, between your, uh, so all other ones that mitigated uh, that we learned how to mitigate other attacks. So all together, we will protect the layer three, layer three uh, attacks as well. So these are the, uh, some information on attacks, guys. Next, we have the VPN. So guys, uh, VPN is, what is VPN normal? We say the virtual private network and uh, virtual private network VPN is a connection via public network or a secure, or you can say it's a secure tunnel between your uh, public network and you. So let me show you. Uh, so before that types of VPN guys, so we have, actually we have only two types of VPN when we say uh, VPN site to site and remote access. This firewall VPN and host to host VPNs is more advanced. We'll understand it later. So when we say site to site, let me show you. So side to side looks something like this. You can see here. So side to side VPN, when, so let's say you have a corporate office over here and this is your remote office. So this side to side VPN is, is a permanent one. So you have multiple sites or the single site, you have created a tunnel. So guys, these, these tunnels are virtual. This is not a physical tunnel any, anyway. So in that case, you are just sending traffic from one office to your remote office securely. So the most important uh, aspect of this uh, VPN is security. Security is to protect your data. So in that case, it will encrypt your data and sending throughout your net, uh, throughout the internet so that any person sitting in, under the internet and trying to hack any traffic, once he will hack, he will open, but he cannot understand anything because he will not be having any key to decrypt that traffic that you are sending to the remote office or to the person. So only the remote office, which has the key, which uh, has a key only can decrypt this traffic and pass through. So another example, you can see this is the IPsec tunnel. So these are the protocols that will be used in the uh, uh, VPNs. So you can see the similar one of the another one. And this is the example of multiple sites. So this is your one office, another office, and the, the Chicago office. And uh, you can see IPsec tunnel over here. So these are the kind of permanent tunnels which will be keep using, uh, or uh, maybe they are idle for some time if no traffic is being made. Another VPN is your uh, uh, remote access. So in remote access, it's not like that. Remote access is kind of your, uh, the remote access VPN is type of any connected VPN where, which is, which is your work from home scenario. So when you, when you want to connect 
to your office network you will be dialing to your you will be connecting or you will be associating the connection to your uh, office and uh, you will be having a connectivity and once you're done you can disconnect so that's not a specific permanent connection like site to site have and most important thing is the vpn most uh, so vpn connections the modes of vpn connection we have two types of modes one is tunnel mode that i told you just now uh, when the traffic is being transferred according to the tunnel and the transport which is which is the most popular one actually the tunnel mode and uh, the tunnel mode you can see the complete packet will be encapsulated with new headers and the original headers will be hidden so if you have remember uh, the osi model when we have the data it will attach Uh, the headers that is called encapsulation so in this case you can see the new header is attached new l3 header and the original l3 l4 or data will be hidden so these red will be hidden and these are the new headers so if anyone uh, open this packet he will never be seen even the ip information even your data nothing right but in the transport mode it will only encrypt the data and the l4 information it will not encrypt the ip information and uh, the layer to the mac information so this is your transport mode so maybe if some if you have uh, the connection which cannot uh, which cannot uh, have uh, more headers or more heavy packet to be transmitted so you can use this transport mode or wherever it doesn't require to protect your ips or the l2 l3 information then you can use this transport mode otherwise everywhere we use this tunnel mode so as i told you the protocols used for this site to site and remote access vpns are many like we say ipsec tunnel we can make or these are the tunnel modes you can say uh, l2 tp layer 2 tunneling protocol point to point tunneling protocols this normally used between the uh, microsoft devices uh, when they create a the tunnel between the servers ssl gre tunnel and mpls so these are the more advanced guys again just i am telling you for uh, for knowing at least and then <clears throat> if you talk about detail in detail ipsec so ipsec is a framework sorry <clears throat> ipsec is a framework and it's a integrity key exchange the sessions which is made between the ipsec is called ic sessions so i phase 1 i phase 2 will study in detail and to see the session details how so to understand to troubleshoot the session is initiating properly or not or where exactly we have we have the issues so we need to do show crypto isacamp asset detail in cisco devices and similar to this and the ssl version it was earlier 1 1.0 and uh, 2.0 but now <clears throat> but now this uh, so the latest version again came it was ssl 3.0 but that is also depreciated so ssl 2.0 and 3.0 is depreciated uh, because uh, it is uh, depreciated by the I ietf you must have heard ietf that is internet engineering task force so they have depreciated this uh, versions but right now the version is uh, ssl version 1.2 which is currently in use so we'll study in depth guys these vpn topics how ipsec works how ssl vpn works hope you like thank you bye